everyone! So in this session, we, the Group 1 reporters, will discuss our topic which is entitled Developing a Classroom Culture that Supports a Problem-Solving Approach to Mathematics. So without further ado, let's start! Now, what this article in CPD activities offer? So, this article offers you practical ways to investigate aspects of your classroom culture. It also offers suggestions to help you develop the culture further so that students are encouraged to develop as independent mathematicians with strong problem-solving skills. So this is important as we know that independent problem-solving skills are essential for students for 21st century's life and work. Furthermore, so the purpose of CPD allows an individual to devote time and attention to crucial aspects of their own growth on a regular basis, and it offers the framework for a professional to address any knowledge gaps. Alright, now, how to use this resource? So you can use this article and its activities as an individual, with a colleague, or in a focus group, or as a whole school staff together as you seek to offer students the highest quality learning opportunities in mathematics. Good morning, this is Sharon Macy Korea. So, problem solving skills. A problem is something you don't immediately know how to solve. There is a gap between where you are and getting started on a path to a solution. This means that you, your students require thinking and playing with the problem time. They need to test out ideas, to make conjectures, to go up dead ends and adjust their thinking in the light of what they learn from this. Discuss ideas with others and become comfortable to take risk. When students are confident to behave in this way, they are then able to step into problems independently rather than immediately turning as, as teachers to ask what to do. And as a teachers, we can support our students to develop the skills they need to tackle problems by the classroom culture we create. It needs to be one where questioning and deep thinking are valued, mistakes are seen as useful, all students contribute and their suggestions are valued, being stopped is seen as honorable and students learn from shared discussion with the teacher, the teaching, teaching assistant, and peer classmates. Thank you. Hi everyone! Now let us discuss what is happening in the classroom, especially in math class. Math teachers often focus on having students complete problems in writing, rather than talking through their thought processes. However, if students are not talking and explaining in math class, they are not truly understanding. Luckily, there are some routines that can be implemented in math classrooms to increase student voice. Fun, hands-on math games are a great way to make early math concepts clear and keep your students engaged. Introducing math games into the classroom is a great way to make learning fun, engaging, and motivating for young learners. And the best part about starting early, kindergarten to grade 2, is that it helps your students to develop a positive attitude toward math from an early age, setting them up for a successful academic future. Help students better understand math by presenting multiple examples, encouraging collaboration on alternative solutions, and framing the class with a clear agenda and effective summary. The ultimate goals of mathematics instruction are students understanding the material presented, applying the skills, and recalling the concepts in the future. There are six ways to teach for understanding in the mathematics classroom. Number one is create an effective class opener. Number two is introduce topics using multiple representations. 
Number three, solve the problems many ways. Number four, show the application. And number five, have students communicate their reasoning. And lastly, finish class with a summary. Okay, now for the next video, they're going to discuss different aspects that they need to consider and more information on each aspect. So hello, good day everyone. This is Anime Villa Hermosa and now let's continue. So what is next? So having investigated what is actually um, going on in your classroom, take a look at the relevant sections below and see what would help you develop your classroom culture. So aspect one. So who does all the talking in which class parts of the lesson? So how did you turn out? As teachers, we are very good at talking. You will be not be alone if you talked for a good percentage of the time in your video. So sometimes we find it hard to let the students have a go and then develop their thinking from there as we are worried they may they might get stuck waste their time or lo lost confidence so we need to give them the confidence that part of the mathematical process is getting stuck and learning from dead ends or things that don't quiet work so idea to try. So look for problems that require a little explanation to start yet are uh, rich in thinking. So for example, how many dots? How did you count them? What about your friends? How did each of them count the dots? Ask your teacher for some other pictures of dots for you to count and share ideas about how you counted them. So give the students a five minutes to explore the problem and see how they might get started. Then discuss it together as a class. Then they can work out the rules through discussion together rather than you telling them and then making sure that they really understand. This is a great for developing their mathematical thinking skills as well as enabling you to talk less. You can develop this idea further by playing a new game under the visualizer with a teaching assistant or student so that the student can then try working out the rules. So not got a visualizer, then use large equipment and gather the students around. Good day everyone, so my name is Carlo Cogito. So for today's video, we're going to continue a discussion of Miss Miller Hermosa. Okay, so next is discipline yourself to only make a comment on students answer their questions. After another student has responded to clarify what was said, ask the questions or take the thinking further. And the last is you would like to ask the students to explain their thinking so far to the rest of the class and then take questions from their peers rather than you as a teacher or intervening. Good questions are the key to a productive discussion. So these include not only the questions used to jump to start the discussion, but also the questions used to probe for the deeper analysis. Ask for clarifications or examples, explore implications, and etc. It is helpful to think about the various kinds of questions you might ask in the cognitive skills they requires to answer. So David 1993 lists a list of questions types including exploratory questions, which is proof facts and basic knowledge, challenge questions, which is interrogate assumptions, conclusions, or interpretations. Next is relational questions, ask for comparisons of teams, ideas, or issues. So next is diagnostic questions, for motives or causes. And next is action questions, which is called for a conclusion or action. 
next is cause and effect. That's just which acts for causal relationships between ideas, actions, or events. And next is extension questions. Expand the, the discussion. Next is hypothetical question which is post the change in the past or issues. Next is priority questions which is seek to identify the most important issues. And next is which is the last is summary questions which is say the synthesis. So these question types can be mapped into the close taxonomy of learning objectives which shows increasing levels of cognitive complexity. So a student move from fairly simple texts such as recall of the information to more complex texts such as synthesis, evaluation, or creation. Hello everyone, good morning. So this is Cheryl and Oxymar together with my partner, Miss Charife Duterte. So we are the one who discuss the aspect number two. So without further ado, let's start. So aspect number two, what questions do I ask? We, we can use these questions to guide the students through problems while stimulating their mathematical thinking and gathering strategies. As we all know, assessment for learning is key to helping us to support students to move forward in their learning. The questions are grouped in three different ways. So first, stage of the lesson. Second, level of thinking. And lastly, mathematical skill. So first, we will tackle about the stage of the lessons. So it will be grouped into four main categories. First, starter questions. So these take the form of open-ended questions that focus the students thinking skills in general directions and give them a starting point so as a teacher it is very important that we ask first a questions to our students so that our students can relate and can connect our topic we tackled asking a questions to our students before we jump in our discussion it can help them to enhance their capabilities in thinking and can relate to our topics for example how could you sort this how many ways can you find to what happens when we so this type of questions it can enhance the ability of the students in thinking and constructing an answer in this question second is questions to stimulate the, the mathematical thinking so these questions assess students to focus in particular strategies and help them to see patterns and relationships so this aids the formation of a strong conceptual network the questions can serve as a prompt when students become stuck take note we can be tempted to turn these questions into instructions which is far less likely to stimulate thinking and removes responsibility for the problem solving from the students so for example how can this pattern help you find an answer what do you think come next and why is there a way to record what you found that might help us see more patterns third is assessment questions questions such as these ask students to explain what they are doing or how they arrived at a solution they allow the teacher to see how the students are thinking what they understand and what level they are operating at 
obviously they are the best as after the students have had time to make progress with the problem to record some finding and perhaps achieve at least one solution for example what have you discovered how did you find that out why do you think that what made you decide to do it that way and the last is the final discussion question so these questions draw together the efforts of the class and prompt sharing and comparison of strategies and solutions so this is a vital phase in a in the mathematical thinking process it provides further opportunity for reflection and realization of mathematical ideas and relationships. For example, who has a different solution? Are everybody's results the same? Why or why not? Have we found all the possibilities? So letter B is the levels of thinking. So there are some various questions that we can use, apply, and stimulate in dealing levels of thinking. And we can apply these levels of thinking to stimulate the higher order questions. So what are the different kinds or types of the levels of thinking? so that we can apply so first is the memory so when we say memory it describes us to recalls or to, to memorizes information so what are the possible questions or guide questions that we can use especially in dealing problem solving uh, expression or equations so the questions are so what have we been working on that might help with this problem so by that uh, by that question or by, by, uh, by that guide question, we can recall and entails information from the levels of thinking. Second is the translation. Translation means the changes information into another form. So the guide question is, is there a way to record what you found that might help us? see more patterns so in that question it ruins and changes our plans plans to another so the third is the interpretation interpretation helps us to discover relationships so we ask these questions like what's different or what's the same so can you see a pattern so it helps us to build and create relationships among other things being involved in the kind of levels of thinking so the fourth is the application application describes us to solve problem use of appropriate generalizations and skills it surely helps this question such as how can this pattern help you find an answers so other questions are what do you think comes next and lastly it involves with why questions fifth is the analysis it means to solve problem conscious knowledge of thinking so we may use this guide questions to fulfill these levels of thinking and these are the questions what have you discovered so how did you find out or how did you find that out or why do you think that so and why what make you decide to do it that in that way so otherwise it will surely solve conscious thinking factors so next is the synthesis so it means solve a problem that requires thinking skills or thinking capabilities so by asking questions so we can use this as our guide to stimulate this level of thinking that requires a cognitive ability so the questions are who has a different solution or are everybody's results or answers the same so lastly is the evaluation so it makes a value judgment so in this level we can define the hypothesis created by our learners and it will help them through these guide questions and these are 
have we all found the possibilities or other questions or God questions or how do we know it? Do you think we have found the best solution? So through that, we or the learners evaluate themselves and makes a judgment for themselves. So let's proceed to letter C, the mathematical skills. So another way of grouping the question is according to mathematical skills they encourage and use. So there are branches of mathematical skills being established. So first is the exemplifying and specializing. So this means to demonstrate, show, choose, and describe. So we accommodate learnings through using the set of questions such as is there another? So what's, what's it like? So are there any special ones and others? So next is completing, deleting, and correcting. So from the word itself, what must be removed, added, and altered in order to ensure or to allow learnings? So and what must be altered without affecting and what's need to be changed? So that's the second mathematical skills. The third one is the comparing, the sorting, and organizing. So this means that what's the same about and what's different. So or the compare and contrast questions. So we must or we describe as the sort, compare, and organize. So next would be the changing, varying, reversing, and altering. So in this mathematical skills, we describe this, what happens when it change. We use many what-ifs. We use these questions such as, if this is the answer of similar questions, what was the question? And uses the quickest and easiest way to accommodate these mathematical skills. So lastly is the explaining, justifying, verifying, convincing, and refuting. So this means you are giving valid answers and you are applying to reasoning skills. So it involves by asking and explaining why and explain the roles or the uses of a particular thing. So it really stated there how significant the mathematic, mathematical skills through asking questions and through asking questions uh, is helpful in a way that it accommodate and stimulate knowledge in dealing mathematical ways. So that would be all for the mathematical skills in or through asking questions. Hi everyone, good day. I am Chrislian Gonzaga and together with Miss Crystal Lumayam, we are going to discuss the aspect three. I wondered what you discovered when you take a look at your classroom. Was it a range of students who answers the question or did certain students repeatedly answer? Encourage the students to become fluent with the mathematical vocabulary. Students learn to join in conversation by hearing what others are saying, listening to how words are being used and playing around with those words themselves. This means that some modeling of talk is useful between you and your teaching assistant. You and a puppet or you and one of more articulate students in the class. Capture keywords and phrases that you hear from your students as they talk and put them up on your mathematics talk wall or other display to support the students to use those words. Putting the words inside ready cut out laminated speech bubbles can be very effective and create an appealing and interactive display. You can also stimulate some talk by joining in with a pair or group of students. For example, make a liberate mistake and say and see how the students respond. So, I have here a game that will help the learners especially when it comes to mathematical problems. So, let's take a look on how these ideas can be useful in our game called the Dati 6 game. This could be a good game to try out in a staff meeting to support the development of classroom culture across the school. 
in this game, you can play it together and then look for some ways that you could adapt it to suit to your class. For example, draw counters in the boxes to aid bonds. Use different dice, make the box total different. Next, Consider the focus of the learning for the lesson, the lesson objective. It may be that you want to choose a single objective, either a number one or using and applying one. Or a double objective, a number objective and a using and applying objective. In problem solving, the beginner engage with practical mathematical activities. When becoming proficient, they adopt a systematic approach. When it comes to communicating, the beginner respond to questions and ideas from peers and adults and refers to the materials they have used and talk about what they have done and what patterns they have noticed. When becoming proficient, they can now describe the strategies that they use. Reasoning. In reasoning, the beginner explains the numbers and calculations. When becoming proficient, they can now predict what could happen and give a reason. So that's it. Try the game in your classroom. Meet back as a staff and share your findings together and decide on how you can plan to develop your classroom cultures in the light of your investigations around the DATI 6. So thank you so much for listening and now let's give the floor to Ms. Crystal Lumayam to continue the discussion for the Aspect 3. Thank you and goodbye. For the lesson, show the students the video clip and ask them to work out the rules of Dati 6. Collect together a class set of ideas, refine and adjust them until you are all agreed on the rules. Let them try out the game themselves and consider whether any of the ideas below are useful to try out. They are based on three elements. First, asking. Second, listening. And the last is responding. First, we have asking. A useful strategy is to ask questions, open questions that encourage the students to articulate their thinking. Open questions that could be useful are questions such as... How many more dots do you need to fill that rectangle? I think you need five more dots to fill that rectangle. Am I right? And how many rectangles have you filled so far? If you throw a three, which rectangle would you put that dots in? I've thrown this. Which rectangle could that go in? I'm wondering what to do with this score. Can you help me? And the last is, if I throw a six, how many spaces are left for me to put it in? It is helpful to use the mathematical vocabulary of rectangle rather than box in the question. When you do this, you are enforcing K-mathematical language for the students that they are in the process of learning how to use for themselves. Whenever we ask a question, to a student, we need to allow enough wait time for them to respond. Feeling under pressure to answer a question quickly can be very uncomfortable and can prevent us from being able to articulate our thoughts very clearly. Students learn to join in conversations by hearing what others are saying, listening to how words are being used, and playing around with those words themselves. This means that some talk or some modeling of talk around this game could be useful. Between you and your teaching assistant, you and a puppet, or you and one of the more articulate students in the class. You may also like to capture some K phrases and words that you hear students using as they talk and put them up on your mathematics talk wall. Or other display to support the students to use those words. Putting the words inside really cut out speech bubbles can be very effective and create an appealing display. 
You may also like to stimulate some talk by joining in with a pair or group of students and playing a dump. For example, you could throw the die and then you put more dots in a rectangle on the grid than there should be. You throw a 4 and put 5 dots. Or you could put more dots in a rectangle than are needed to make the full 6. Second is listening. Listening carefully to what the students actually say is sometimes harder than we realize. We may not hear clearly what they say as we may be expecting them to give us a fixed answer that we have predetermined. This can be called guess what is in the teacher's head. We need to be ready to be open to their answers and be curious to understand what they are trying to say. Sometimes their answer may be part of a sentence and our temptation is to finish the sentence off for them. See what happens if you just repeat back to them what they have said. Using the same words they have used and see if that helps them to finish the sentence. It may be that their answer is rather jumbled or rumbling. Our temptation in this case is to rephrase it, re reorganize it, and repeat it back to the class in what we consider to be its name, improved form. We may hear ourselves saying something like, Thank you, Elspeth. What Elspeth said was... See what happens if instead you check with the child. Elspeth, if you have heard what they said correctly by saying something such as, I think what you said was, am I right? When saying what you thought they said, try and use the same words that they used. Next is responding. After mastering the art of of the open starter question and listening carefully to the students responses we then need to decide how we are going to respond to what they have said starter question how many more do you need to fill that rectangle and a follow-up question or statement could be are you sure convince me show me how you know that and the next starter question if you threw a three which rectangle could you put that in and the follow-up question or statement could be i am curious to know why you choose that one i would choose this one are we both right and the next starter question would be i've thrown a six what can i do and a follow-up question or statement would be what could happen if i threw another six how many sixes can i throw and still fit them on the board this kind of approach that we could incorporate to the learners, we should not put them into a box, let them to explore and find the answers coming from their mind. As a teacher, we must need to ask, ask questions that students can answer, not just yes or no. They must need to respond in an open questions on, or conversations. Students could benefit from this strategy to articulate students' mind and enhance their logical thinking skills. Just keep on asking, keep on listening, keep on responding in both sides of teacher and students to each other to prove their concrete understanding of on the mathematical problem. Hello everyone, my name is Kate Louis Arfat and I am here to introduce you to aspect number four. So aspect four. How well do I listen to the students' answers and seek to understand what they are saying? So, listening carefully to what the children actually say is sometimes harder than we realize. 
we may um, not hear clearly what they say as we might be expecting them to give us um, a fixed answer that we have predetermined. This is be called a uh, guess what in the teacher's head. We need to be um, ready to be open to their, to their answers and be curious to understand what they are trying to say. So, be curious about what the student was saying and ask a clarifying question um, such as, um, so, what you are saying is, then you could alternatively um, invite the students to tell a partner that they think uh, their peer said. So this is also useful if their answered answer is rather um, jumbled or rambling. Of course, avoid making assumptions about what the students is saying. Good day. I am Joanne Mantos and I will be the one to continue the topic of Miss Kate Louis. So for continuation, one of the question in aspect four is do a slightly adjust what they said to make better sense or fit a better right answer. So in this question, teachers must encourage student-centered learning by allowing students to share in their decisions believing in their capacity to lead and remembering how it feels to learn. Placing students at the center of their own learning requires their collaboration. They need a voice in why, what, and how learning experiences take shape. Teachers are not only do they guide students in academics or extracurricular activities, but Teachers are also responsible for shaping a child's future, making him or her a better human being. So, they need to adjust what is the opinion of individuals so that the students can build self-esteem to share their thoughts and knowledge. And the last question is, do I ask students a clarification question such as, can I just check what I think you said was? Okay. Yes. It is very important to ask student clarification because it is one of the reasons why teachers need to ask questions is to check for their understanding, which benefits for teachers and students. They should ask questions that will require students to use their thinking skills that he or she is trying to develop and also to promote comprehension to students that they can explain their ideas and concepts in a variety of ways. Good day everyone, I'm Major Heidi and uh, today I will discuss to you the aspect 5. So. In aspect 5, what do I do with the student's answer? So, I wonder what you discovered from your video, whether you're surprised but by what you did. So, to respond student's answer or to handle student's answer is to give uh, praise and rewards at the right time. So, second, a right answer must be both complete and correct. So, third, praise your students after every correct answer then fourth is when your student gives a right answer on the first try without help give special recognition but if your students will answer a wrong one try to correct them in a right way without hurting the hurting their feelings and try to appreciate their answers because as a teacher we often feel the need to speak after students has spoken and offer some comments regarding to their response. After all, it's teacher's job. So continuation and Johaidi's part, which is the idea to try. The last one is follow it with another question. So see our list of suggestions. You might like to see if you can add to this as a staff and make a whole school list of great follow-up questions. So some follow-up questions to start your list. So first, are you sure? So this kind of question will be the best 
for the learners just to make them sure on the answers they are making and it can make them think and analyze all the questions properly in which they can figure out if it is wrong or right answer second is convince me so this phrase emphasizes which makes the student to assure their answers because by this question they will conclude that they should persuade their answer to convince the teacher on the answer students makes third is show me how you know that so in this question the learners will explain his or her side where did they know that specific things and how they figured out the answer on that specific question whereas they were explaining their understanding and defending where they learned it from and fourth is i am curious to know why you chose that one so in this question the students will explain how they choose and defend on the answer they were choosing it can help them to build one's decision making on the learners because by throwing that question learners were able to express and defend why they choose it so fifth is i would choose this one are we both right so this kind of question measures the understanding of the learners so it is better if the teacher would also share his or her ideas on the class to open up their understanding and also to educate that both of it are also be the right answer so last follow-up question is what could happen if so in this question the students will able to formulate ideas what will happen if that situation occurs so by questioning what ifs these learners can make some trial and errors on their minds and able to formulate things that can help them figure out what could happen if they will given the situation for them to answer and by questioning it it can also help the learners think about what will happen if their chosen answers of the learners are in error so it can tell the teacher and show how deep the understanding of the learners on the problems they were answering aspect number six how do i facilitate the learning this will depend on how you construct the lesson and how you will encourage the students to engage with the problem facilitating learners are carries many advantages for both the teacher and the students and range in scope from coaching a small group gathering around equipment to teach as a future teacher creating a plan or interesting activity where it helps the students to focus on the lesson and having some strategies to create a great relationship towards the students and teachers then the teachers use teachers notes to guide them because it is the foundation upon which a successful case study is built the purpose of the teaching note is to provide the instructors with a how to guide for facilitation of the case study this activity entitled make those bracelet activity is where it teach the students to focus on the problem to solve and encourage the students to think where it is more helpful to dig deeper into their learnings this activity also engage the students in both a spatial and numerical context it challenges their abilities to see symmetrical reflections it also gives them the freedom to choose how do they do about the task and by this, they can learn a lot from adopting one method and then reali realizing that the alternative method might be better. For the question number two, do I give them key pointers, hints, clues to help them? So for me, it's no. It would be not more challenging to the students if they will be given a hint or a clue because they will just depend on it 
so that it would be easier for them to take the challenge and they couldn't use their critical thinking and problem solving to solve the challenge. Challenge. For the number three, do I pull out the learning from the student's thinking and use that to develop the journey of the lesson? It is no, because encouraging them to use learning and thinking so that they will explore and discover new things about the lesson and develop more their knowledge and skills. By this, it helps to improve their communication and confidence to do the challenge and solve it by their peers or small group. When teachers and educational leaders facilitate learning, they create students who learn how to rationally question things around them. This makes them into more intelligent, critically thinking learners who will go on to make positive adjustments and changes wherever life leads them. To make them understand the lesson, it is important to give an example to make them understand and by that you will encourage them to answer and make their own mistakes because it can lead them or learn them by their own mistakes. Good day everyone, so aspect 7, how confident are the students to take a risk, try out ideas and make mistakes? So. Let me ask you a question first. Why is it important to take risks and make mistakes in learning? So, if people can move past the overwhelming fear of failure and realize the advantages of taking uh, more risks, the more satisfaction we will have with the things learned and the opportunities we never thought were possible. So, when taking a risk, result in a successful outcome. So students see and increase their self-esteem. So if teachers cultivate a supportive environment, even when um, risk-taking fails, learning that the consequences of failure are manageable and can make students more resilient. Risk-taking also leads to learning new skills because being encouraged to take a risk in class allows students to try something different something new so while they may find that they don't enjoy a new task they may also emerge with a new passion so there are benefits of risk taking so including empowering students to make life choices making new friends and learning how to fail and grow from failure by modeling risk taking teachers can inspire students and give them confidence through what teachers can model risk taking by acknowledging their own shortcomings or their own mistakes so for example if they make a mistake in the class teachers can point it out and describe to the class how they plan to correct the situation so children learn from people around them that's true so the first step towards making students comfortable with risk taking is allowing them to see their teachers take risks so i strongly believe that you have to fail in order to grow you need to do that through difficult situations so that's how i'll set the, the stone someday when i become a teacher i want my students to believe risks are valuable i want to have a class where risks are celebrated i want my students to feel free to make mistakes in front of friends and peers and collaborate to figure out answers i want them to try not just when they're sure they'll succeed i also want them to take a risk i want a class of risk takers i believe the most important aspect in a safe and positive learning environment is the rapport or the good rapport between a teacher and his or her students. When the students understands that their teacher cares about them uh, and, and wants them to do well, students feel comfortable asking questions, making mistakes, and taking risks in order to learn something new. To build this kind of relationships, the teacher should take interest in each student's strengths and interest, as well as their struggles 
and for frustrations he or she needs to act as a positive model for learning and celebrating achievements when the students see that their teachers or their teacher can learn from his or her mistakes and laugh even in times when he or she feels frustrated the students will feel much will feel much more comfortable to do the same so how can we achieve this to have a healthy classroom environment is to getting feedback from my from my students or from our students creating learning communities and letting students fail without major consequences so as a future educator the whole the whole reason why i do my job as a teacher is because i want my students to learn particularly the student who might not feel as comfortable who might be doubting themselves or be scared those are the students i can really help what does my body language communicate my body language communicates with the people who are speaking or to whom i'm speaking with it is to build trust and connections for speakers to be at ease that they are comfortable to speak because of the interest that the listeners have given listeners as well can feel interest if the speakers themselves apply the body language when they speak body language can help us in building credibility express our emotions and connect with the listeners upon watching the videos i am surprised knowing that some of my body language is contradict to what is really meant by it now that i learned from the videos I prepare a few challenge in myself where the body language or the correct usage of body language can be seen. Your president is a thief. He don't have at least one potential to be the next president. He is a loser. Our country don't deserve to have him. Your prank kills me out. Don't say it again that you don't love me, that you fell out of love. It kills me. Your chosen president is the newly elected president of the Philippine Republic. Understanding body language is important, but it is also essential to pay attention to other cues such as context. In many cases, you should look at signals as a group rather than focusing on a single action. Body language refers to the nonverbal signals that we use to communicate. According to experts, these nonverbal signals make up a huge part of daily communication. From our facial expressions to our body movements, the things we don't say can still convey volumes of information. It has been suggested that body language may account for between 60 to 65 percent of all communication. Think for a moment about how much a person is able to convey with just a facial expression. A smile can indicate approval or happiness. A frown can signal disapproval or unhappiness too. In some cases, our facial expressions may reveal our true feelings about a particular situation. While you say that you are feeling fine, the look on your face may tell people otherwise. Just a few examples of emotions that can be expressed via facial expressions include happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, disgust, fear, confusion, excitement, desire, and contempt. The expression and a person's face can even help determine if we trust or believe what the individual is saying. One study found that the most trustworthy facial expression involved a slight raise of the eyebrows and a slight smile. This expression, the researchers suggested, conveys both friendliness and confidence. 
Facial expressions are also among the most universal forms of body language. The expression used to convey fear, anger, sadness, and happiness are similar throughout the world. Researcher Paul Ekman has found support for the universality of a variety of facial expressions tied to particular emotions including joy, anger, fear, surprise, and sadness. Research even suggests that we make judgments about people's intelligence based upon their faces and expressions. One study found that individuals who had narrower faces and more prominent noses were more likely to be preserved as intelligent. People with smiling, joyful expression were also judged as being more intelligent than those with angry expressions. That would be all. Thank you very much. God bless us all.